The Canucks will have a new captain this season, and it won't be Roberto Luongo. The Canucks goaltender held a press conference to talk about the decision, and our reporter, Ragnar Hagen, was there. Roberto Luongo admitted that juggling both captaincy and starting goalie duties wasn't always an easy task, especially when dealing with the media. Well, I'm accountable for my actions, and um, you know, I, uh, I'm always the first to admit when I feel that uh, it could be better. But at the same time, uh, you know, when you're the captain, you're you're asked uh, on a daily basis, you know, what the team can do better. What do you say? You know, you don't want to look like you're throwing your teammates under the bus, and it was kind of a difficult uh, position for me to be in. So. Um, Sometimes it came off the wrong way and, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, like I said, being a goaltender, you don't want to be in that position where you feel like um, you're putting the blame on somebody else. When asked to speculate who should be the next captain of the Vancouver Canucks, everyone seems to have an opinion. One of the Sedins, definitely. They, they run the whole game, they keep it going, good flow. It all depends. You could either give it to Henrik Sedin, who's a more mature player, and it might actually cause a little bit of conflict within the team because it might be a little bit of a jealousy issue between Kessler and Henrik Sedin. But if you're looking for true grit and everything, I would have to say give it to Kessler. It's just the position that he plays, I think, makes it difficult to give his full focus to, to being a captain. Oh, we got, we got a lot of guys that are capable of filling the role. And, um, uh, you know, that's going to be a decision that uh, Mike and, uh, and his man are going to make. But, uh, you know, there's a handful of guys that can, can, take, uh, can be right up there. For now, Luongo says the only thing he wants to concentrate on is stopping the puck. And really, that's all that you can ask for from a starting goaltender. As for who will be the next Canuck to don the sea, we should find that out in the next few days. Rogner Hagen in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. We're now joined by Rogner live in the newsroom. Rogner, there's been a lot of speculation about who the next captain will be. Can you fill us in on what people are saying? Well, a lot of people are throwing out Ryan Kessler's name, and he definitely shows the grit and emotion that you want to see in a team captain. But I'm going to have to go with Henrik Sedin. I like the quiet leadership qualities that he has. Kind of reminds me of uh, Steve Eisenman in that way. Do you think in the near future that we might see another goaltender captaining another NHL team? You know what, Ben? I can't see it happening in the near future. Goalies have so much on their plate already that this mo adding more pressure onto them isn't the way to go. And also coupled with the fact that a captain is supposed to be the only player that's allowed to talk to a referee, but goalies can't go, up to, uh, can't go past center ice without getting penalties. So I think it's kind of silly. This week, Vancouver is playing host to the 15th World Clean Air Congress. Our Ben Milger spoke to some of the people involved and filed this story. Delegates from environmental agencies around the world are in Vancouver for the World Clean Air Congress. The conference opened Monday morning with a speech by former BC Premier Mike Harcourt. He touched on a range of issues but focused mainly on building sustainable cities. Have a sustainable future and sustainable cities uh, means there's going to be some clashes. It's going to be a messy decade the next 10 years between those uh, people that realize that climate change is human caused and we need to mitigate, adapt and innovate a whole different way of doing cities. Vancouver uses machines that measure air quality. Vancouver, you're kind of lucky because of the ocean nearby and you don't get the inversion and you don't have those problems. Vancouver's pretty good. Uh, ammonia is, is a concern near the chicken farms, but they monitor it quite closely. And the fires in BC recently have been a reason for concern. Vancouver is an interesting choice as host of the 2010 World Clean Air Congress. Even as we attempt to make the transition from one of the world's most livable cities to one of its most sustainable, we are still a city divided on environmental issues. For proof of that, one need look no further than the current debate raging over the proposed Hornby Street bike lane. Ben Milger, in Vancouver, for BCIT Magazine. The new school year marks the start of full-day kindergarten at public schools in BC. But as BCIT magazine Shahid Devji finds out, the head of Burnaby Montessori School thinks the kindergarten program is lacking. Experts have said the building blocks of a child's future are laid before his or her sixth birthday. But according to the head of Burnaby Montessori School, Faye Balkin, full-day kindergarten may not be the answer. Big key differences are, are that in a kindergarten, a regular kindergarten program, the children are all five years of age. Uh, in Montessori classrooms, that's not uh, always the case. Often they will be with all five-year-olds for half the day and with three, four and five-year-old children for the other half of the day. Children who are in three age range, ranges. So we follow the child, their individual development, and engage them 
as an individual. What's the name of the blue part? Teachers at Burnaby Montessori, like Tanya Chong, can focus on a child's specific needs, such as language. Because it's very difficult, they came to Vancouver, they don't know any English, and also parents would like them to speak Chinese at home to have their first language. So they keep here, they cry, they, you know, helpless, but after we teach them, we, he will learn very fast by just the material all around in the classroom. Not only the materials, just the all environments in Montessori, they learn this very quickly. Balkan says the public kindergarten program needs to be revamped. The kindergarten program has not been meeting the needs of children, especially in terms of preparing them for the grade one curriculum. They're lowering children to the lowest common denominator in order to include everyone. But I, I really think that needs to stop. While she supports the kindergarten program, Balkan believes Montessori offers more. Shahid Devji in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Next on BCIT Magazine, the Salvation Army is supplying families in need with some back to school basics. Burnaby's Wildlife Association deals with a few challenges and these ones might surprise you. And the Vancouver Aquarium showcases a whistling Amazon parrot. Stay with us.